the European Union's dream of federalizing the whole continent and creating the United States of Europe is going well for them, but not for the people of Europe. Welcome to the crazy world of Brussels and the European Union. The Eurofanatics who are obsessed with getting things done their own way, regardless of the will of the people, regardless of sovereignties in these countries and democracies. They came up with these plans a while ago. We've been reporting on this over the last few years. The idea of the United States of Europe initially started as a conspiracy theory. Then we were proven right when they announced the plans. And then they said, well, these are just proposals. Nothing's going to get done. We're not going to create an EU army, any of that nonsense. Well, well, well. We have some news for you guys because France and Germany, as usual, have gone together to do a bit of a declaration. Yes, this is the German Franco declaration. And Guy Verhofstadt is very excited about this. Proposals to end unanimity, uh, unanimity and elections with an EU wide constituency are on the council table. Let's decide ASAP. Okay, and, and by reducing democracy, that's clearly a good idea, right? That, that's how they think. They don't like vetoes. They don't like the fact that you have to actually get everybody to agree. They, they'd rather just completely bypass and skip those processes. But we actually have access to that document that uh, the, the Germans and the French have uh, created. Uh, the, the French palace have uh, published this. It's absolutely crazy. This is on the occasion of the 60th anniversary of the Elysee, Elysee uh, Treaty. Um, and they are using the, the situation with Ukraine and Russia as a perfect excuse to strengthen the European project. Perfect, perfect. It's the same thing with <laughs> when the, the idiots, the glo globalists, came up with the idea of a great reset. It was immediately as uh, the lockdowns were starting and the virus was spreading. They're like, okay, what can we do with this situation? Everything is an opportunity. And that's what they did. So there are a few points to talk about in this uh, document. One of them is about... Uh, the strategic environment and enhancing security and defense. So this it, it talks about the EU army, it talks about in order to oppose, to be fair, they've always been saying this, it's not just to oppose Russia, it's not just to oppose China, but it's also to oppose all continents. They actually oppose America as well. They <laughs> And now they oppose us. They want to protect themselves against their own allies. How crazy is that? They, they, are, they are against NATO. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how crazy do you have to be? So, second point is quite interesting because um, when it comes to energy, economic, environmental, climate, biodiversity, industrial, and social challenges, they couldn't come up with any new words. Uh, the, the European Green Deal remains of crucial importance to reach the common you know, 1.5 uh, degree goal as agreed in the Paris Climate Agreement. Completely forgot about the Paris Climate Agreement that it exists. And um, one of the issues was uh, Donald Trump withdrew the US from it, and Joe Biden crawled back into it and said, "No, no, yeah, we, we love all these crazy ideas. Everything is going to be fine because we politicians and governments, we are the wise ones. We know how to run the world." Yeah. Okay. Now, for a more efficient European Union, oh yes, this is where it gets a bit dodgy when it comes to reducing democracies. So. <laughs> for the short term. I love that. Everything starts short term. We need to widen the field where qualified majority voting applies in the council to overcome the deadlocks that have been observed, such as on certain areas of common foreign, a common foreign and security policy and taxation. Oh, yes. Why not just have a, a completely continental level taxation? I mean, we already had uh, the Americans and Joe Biden uh, proposing and creating a minimum tax rate globally. So they're going to do it anyway in Europe and they're going to do it globally. And Richard Sunak and these idiots have also agreed to it. I don't understand. What is the point of being independent and sovereign as a country if we're just going to say yes to the Americans and the European Union? What, what happened to protecting Britain and the British people? No, it doesn't exist. So <laughs> everything has to go towards globalization. And nothing, there's no one to create some sort of common sense narrative to say, well, we understand that internationalism is inevitable because the world is getting smaller, the, the access to information, the internet and everything. Doesn't mean that you have to completely lose your soul and completely 
created this hybrid situation to go fast track towards your Star Trek utopia. It's crazy. It's absolutely insane. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comment section. I'm Maya Tusi and we are the media.